Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave, and this is part two of the awesome gifted locomotives. So before we get into the other locomotive, the first one, of course, being the Frisco 4100 Mikado, I want to show you the buildings that he gave me. So this one's a Lionel set, water tower. That looks pretty good. I like that. I do really hope to be able to put some buildings on this layout soon. Not sure the brand on this one, but a little switch tower. It's a good looking little tower. I mean, I could always add windows and some lights, I guess, but I could definitely use that. That's cool looking. This looks like a custom styrene platform. Maybe it goes with this next piece, the Lionel station. I guess I have two of these stations now because Nick from Nick's Crossing gave me one and he had uh, the Christmas lights dangled across the front and the back. Um, do I need two stations? I'm not sure, but you know what? I'm gonna use them. Well, it's big enough. I should be able to find room for a couple of stations on it. So that's pretty cool. I mean, like the engines weren't enough. You had to go and give me the caboose and these buildings. I gotta make some progress on this uh, landscaping and uh, get some buildings set up. You know what? I, I think we've waited long enough. We should probably take a look and see what's in this box. This engine is from, if I remember correctly, 1989. And it features a highly detailed die cast metal construction of both the engine and tender. Smoking stack and steam chest, operating headlight, operating backup light, electronic rail sounds remotely activated by standard Lionel transformer, switch for whistle or bell activation, powerful Pullmore motor, spoked drivers with metal rims, metal handrails on the engine and tender, remote controlled forward, neutral, and reverse, opening boiler front, Metal wheels, operating die cast metal knuckle coupler on the tender. Tender features six wheel die cast trucks, detailed coal load, and authentic Redding markings. It actually says on the box, yes, 1989. <laughs> oh man, this tender is huge. Definitely the largest tender on my layout. Long. Reading Railroad. Coupler to coupler, that tender looks like it's almost as long as the Mikado. Not the tender, but the engine itself. That's too cool. Oh, wow. Well, the tether definitely looks a little MPC-ish. I guess in 89, it had only been the LTI for, what, two years, I think? It is the Reading 2100 T1 484. Look at that, this thing is gorgeous. <laughs> Look at that. As much as I love that Mikado, this Reading T1 is just gorgeous. Got a nice flat or maybe satin black finish. And I can't wait any longer to run it, so Let's do that. just awesome and it cleared everything on the layout I'm not sure there was a lot of room in some spots it seemed a bit tight but it didn't hit anything and that's that's always good but then part of the benefit of the foam is if it scrapes anywhere I can just cut away at the foam and it will be fine when I started it up it started in neutral makes sense but then it went reverse which I was surprised by I would assume it would have gone forward I'm not that familiar with this stuff. Either way, it ran really nicely. 
I'm sure both these engines could use a little service, cleaning the wheels and the pickup rollers, a little bit of lubrication. I also don't know what I should run with it. I feel like passenger cars, but I don't really, I don't have Redding cars. Well, you know what? I'm gonna run it with the Lackawanna cars. I, 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 I don't care if it's the wrong railroad. That's what I'm doing. So deal with it. Wow, <laughs> it, th this is just gorgeous. And it looks fantastic going around the layout. I did realize it has a mechanical E unit, which I was a little surprised by. It doesn't have a lever. It's got the plug in the back by the motor and you unplug from one side and put it in the other, uh, but that's fine. Uh, I guess I was expecting an electronic reversing unit, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, kind of encourages me to open it up and clean it all out. I guess if it's got the older style motor and the E-unit, it probably needs a service. When I'm comfortable enough with it to take it apart, right now I'd be afraid to scratch it. Uh, when I'm ready, I'll open it up and give it a service. But it runs really well. Smokes, rail sounds sound good. And really, it's just, it's just such a good looking engine. So instead of talking about it, let's just look at some pictures and watch the thing go. I'm having a little trouble with the connector on the engine. I don't know if it's routed improperly, but it seems to keep getting pulled. And some of these pins are loose. And one of them, the wire just came right out of the pin. We're gonna push the wire through, pull it out the other end. I'm gonna to try to shove it back into the pin here. Okay. 
Okay, well that's better. Certainly not perfect. I don't love these connectors. I find them to be a little annoying. This is where the harness is coming out and it's getting caught on the rear truck when it goes around a turn. For the so. time being, I'm just gonna take this little piece of solid wire, kinda coil it. Made a little hook to hold onto the railing here and to keep this up and away from the truck. Uh, so we'll see if that works, and then I'll do something a little more permanent later on. At the moment, it seems good, but it will depend on whether or not it gets caught between the engine and tender as it's going around, because there's very little clearance. And what alerted me to this was that it came around this turn over here, and that got wedged between the two and popped the engine up off the rail. So the last thing I need is the thing derailing and falling because of that connector. I don't even really know what to say at this point. I'm just really, really enjoying these engines. Uh, the Redding T1 is just impressive. I guess between the two of them, it has the older technology. It's got the Pullmore motor, it's got a mechanical E unit. The, the Mikado runs smoother. Uh, not smoking as much. It is smoking a little bit, but not a lot. So I don't know if the smoke unit got damaged at some point, or if it's just gonna take a while and it'll start producing, I don't know. The T1 is smoking like a dream and running fantastic. And now that I pulled that harness up a little bit uh, away from the rear truck, it's not causing any issues. I, I guess I'm a little partial to it because of the old technology. Uh, the motor that I know how to service, the E unit that I know how to service, it's still within my realm of understanding. 
the Mikado on the other hand, if there's something wrong with that, I'm gonna need to reach out to one of you because I don't think I'd know what to do with it. But they are both amazing. I really can't express adequately my gratitude for the gentleman that gifted these two engines to me and these other buildings and whatnot. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just amazing. And I'm gonna continue enjoying these and maybe I'll do videos at some point uh, showing them in a little more detail, but I just can't focus that much right now. <laughs> I just wanna watch them run. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna watch them go. I guess now I know what I'm looking for at York and that would be a set of passenger cars to go with the T1. So once again, thank you for gifting me these items. And thank you to all of you who continue to watch and enjoy the channel. I really, truly appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.